Hello everyone, Dr. Data Science here to teach you data science methods and tools today, tomorrow, and beyond. Mean squared error, or MSE, is a widely used loss or cost function for solving regression problems. In this video, we want to discuss the connections between MSE and the maximum likelihood estimation approach, which is a common technique for statistical inference. We are going to see under some conditions, we can prove that mean squared error is very much related to solving the maximum likelihood estimation uh, in the case of regression problem. To be more precise, in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about notation, model fitting and training, mean squared error, and finally, we're going to talk about the connections between mean squared error and the maximum likelihood estimation. In supervised learning, the main goal is to find a mapping or function f that allows us to connect inputs, which are features or predictors, to some outputs. In this case, the data set is typically given in the form of an input-output pairs, which we show them here using these two bold notations. So we have x n's, which are the inputs, and the corresponding outputs y n. And then this n goes from 1 to uppercase n, where is the num total number of samples. For solving machine learning problems, we first need to form something known as empirical risk, which is the average loss on the training data that we have. And to simplify this problem and show that this is applicable to linear regression, to more complex and sophisticated deep learning models, we're going to show all the unknown parameters in our model by theta. Therefore, we find this empirical loss, which is the, uh, the sum of the loss functions evaluated at different training data points. And then we divide by the total number of points to find the average. And then this leads to uh, solving the empirical risk minimization problem, which is known as ERM, where we want to find a setting of the parameters theta that minimizes the risk that we just talked about. So here we have this argument uh, of L theta with respect to theta. In the next slide or so, we're going to talk more about the differences between argument and min. But the basic idea is that when we look at argument, we are looking at the value of theta that minimizes this empirical risk. So in other words, we are not looking at the minimum value of L of theta. Instead, we are looking at the optimizer or the value of theta that minimizes this L of theta. To be more specific, uh, about regression problems, the, the most commonly used loss function is using the quadratic loss, which simply finds the difference between the actual and predicted value. So y hat here is what the model predicts, and y is what the uh, actual output is. And after finding this difference, we raise this to the power of 2. And therefore, the empirical risk that we talked about it before will reduce to 1 over n, where n again is the number of data points, and then summation of the differences between the actual outputs and the predicted values. So this f is what the model predicts, and we raise this to the power of 2. And this is what is known as mean squared error. So here our goal is to show that how we can derive this loss function, or why is this loss function have been used uh, so often in the machine learning community from more a statistical perspective. To explain this, let's very quickly review maximum likelihood estimation or MLE in statistical inference. Let's say we have n observations that are independently sampled from the same distribution. In this case, we can find something known as the likelihood function, which is the probability that the data that we have, this D is the data set that we just discussed, is produced by a setting of the parameters theta. And because here we have this independence assumption, 
now we have this product of probabilities for individual observations. Now the goal is to find value of theta that maximizes this likelihood function. Because remember, when we have likelihood, we want to maximize the likelihood. Because here working with product of some terms and it is difficult to optimize this likelihood function, it is very common to take the logarithm of this function. And the reason behind this is that if you have log of product of two terms, then you have the summation of the log of the two terms. So this means that now if I take the log of what we have here for the likelihood function, instead of log of products, I can write this as summation of the log of the individual terms. And this is what you can see here, this log of P of D given theta, which is this summation of log of probabilities. And now remember that in machine learning, we want to find empirical risk and minimize it, whereas what we have talked so far is about maximizing likelihood or log likelihood function. So how we can connect these two things? It's very easy. If you want to maximize a function, now if you multiply this by negative one, now we can minimize it, right? So that's why we can form something known as the negative log likelihood function or NLL. And then therefore now we have this problem where we have argmen of theta, and then we have this summation of negative log of probabilities. And what we're gonna show very uh, soon is that this negative log of probabilities will actually be very much similar to the loss function that we have for uh, regression problems in the form of MSE or mean squared error. Before doing so, let's have a warm up practice and look at uh, a case that we want to apply maximum likelihood estimation. In this case, we assume that we have Bernoulli distribution, which is a discrete probability distribution that uh, takes two values, zero and one. And um, we assume that here that it takes value one with probability theta. And obviously then the probability that we observe zero is one minus theta because this is a binary case and the sum of probabilities must equal one. We can also simplify this using this uh, notation where we have uh, indicator function. So this I that you can see there is equal to one when the condition is met and it's zero when the condition uh, is not true. So when we say theta I to the power of I, Y equals one, this means that if Y equals one, then we get this uh, indicator function to be one, which gives us theta raised to the power of one. And at that case, the second exponent would be zero, i equals zero, uh, y equals zero, and therefore we get just theta. And the same thing with y equals zero. When y equals zero, the second term will have exponent uh, equal one, which gives us one minus theta. And then the first term uh, will give us the exponent uh, of zero, which gives us theta raised to the power of zero or one. So this will, allow us to write this uh, probability distribution or better to say probability mass function in this compact form rather than having a piecewise function. Now we can form the negative log likelihood function which is the negative sum of log of probabilities and here we use also another uh, property of the logarithm function where we have log of a raised to the power of b is equals to uh, b log a. So meaning that the exponent will become the uh, constant behind the logarithm function. With that in mind, we have to take the log of this probability that we have, probability mass function that we have. Therefore, we get the indicator function uh, to be the constant behind the logarithm function. We have theta plus uh, the indicator function of y n equals zero log of one minus theta. And in this case, because uh, the, the first term, which is here, I indicate their function of y n equals one doesn't have any uh, sort of like dependence on theta. We can just include that inside this um, summation and then take the logarithm of theta outside the summation because it doesn't have any index n. 
and we can do the same thing for the second term too. So what this means is that now if we simplify this, we get that um, if we assume that we have n1 uh, observations where the output is 1 and n0 observation when the output is 0, now the negative log likelihood function is negative n1 log of theta plus n0 log of 1 minus theta. And because this is a function of only one variable, if you want to solve this problem of minimizing the negative log likelihood function, you can find the derivative and set it equal to zero. And remember that the derivative of log of theta with respect to theta is one over theta. So therefore we get negative n one over theta plus n zero over one minus theta. The reason that we change the sign here is because inside the logarithm we have 1 minus theta where when we apply the chain rule we get a negative sign. And now we can solve this equation and get to this maximum likelihood estimation of the, uh, the parameter theta which is n1 over n which means that you have to just divide the total number of uh, observations with ones by the total number of samples that we have and this gives us the uh, the sort of like the, the underlying probability for the Bernoulli distribution that we observe one. But in the next slide, we're going to see that you can even use Python to solve this optimization problem. So the way we can do this is to define a function that is this negative log likelihood function, negative n1 log of theta plus n0 log of 1 minus theta. Uh, which is this DEF, this is the, the where we define the function, and theta is a parameter that can be from 0 to 1 because it's probability. And then now we can just plot this function and look at the minimum value of this function. And this is the result that you can see. So under the assumption here that n0, the number of zeros, is 40, the number of ones is 60, we can see that the minimizer is theta equals 0.6. So this is the solution of the arc min. But if we, for some reason, want to look at the minimum value of the negative log likelihood function, if you look at it here, it's somewhere between 50 and 100. But that doesn't really uh, matter very much in the context of machine learning because what we really want to find here is for what value of theta we get the max, the minimum value of the negative log likelihood function, which is 0.6. So this is the difference between argument and min. So now let's go to the main point to see how we can derive the mean squared error or MSE using this maximum likelihood estimation framework. Let's say that the output in our data set for the regression problem is a Gaussian or normal with the mean value, which is what the model predicts, this f is the mapping that we are looking for, and some fixed variance sigma squared. So this is critical here that we're assuming that the variance of this normal distribution is just fixed and doesn't depend on the input. Under these assumptions, we can show that now the probability of y given the input and the parameter theta is normal uh, with mean f of x and variance sigma squared. And if we plug in this into the equation for the probability distribution or PDF of the, uh, of the normal distribution, we get one over a square root of two pi sigma squared. And then this exponential or e to the power of um, this term, negative uh, one over two sigma squared. And then y minus mean raised to the power of 2, where the mean is what the model predicts. And that's what we assume is the mean here. Now, if we form the negative log likelihood function, which if you remember is negative sum of log of probabilities, we get negative sum and then we have log of the two products of these two terms. So we get log of the first term plus log of exponential of whatever is inside these parentheses here. So from the first term, if we simplify this, because we have n of these logarithm terms and it doesn't have any index n, we get n over 2 log of 2 pi sigma squared. And then we have here plus 1 over 2 sigma squared 
and uh, we get this term inside the exponent y minus f of x n and theta. So now you are seeing we are very close because we already found the term which is sum of the differences between actual and predicted values raised to the power of 2. And what this means is that now we can modify this a little bit to get to the mean squared error. So remember, when we are solving uh, you know, the empirical risk minimization, we can ignore or avoid constants because we are looking at the optimizer, not necessarily the minimum value. So this means that the first term is just a constant, doesn't change the solution. And this one over two sigma squared is something that is just, uh, is a positive number multiplied by this function and doesn't have any dependence on theta. So with this in mind, I can just keep the second part of this uh, term, which is the summation of the uh, squared errors. And also with the same argument, we can divide this by one over n um, or any other constant that we want. And if you look at it, this is exactly the average of the sum of the squared differences, right? So basically we get this average term here, this one over n summation from one to n. And this is the mean squared error. So this completes the proof that mean squared error is very much related to the maximum log load estimation. And one thing that you have to keep in mind is that we have made this very important assumption that we have the output variable uh, comes from a normal distribution with fixed variance sigma squared. So if the variance depends on the input data, then obviously we have to estimate that as well. And then um, the solution is not necessarily this mean squared error.